Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. There is this persistent rumor that this show is not actually about bad gear, that I just randomly choose instruments that are guaranteed to trigger a sufficiently big proportion of the global synth community and that anti-synth resentment grows on trees. This is of course not true. There are plenty of instruments that are more or less universally appreciated and I just recently failed to find enough hate on, for example, the Access Virus B on Ovation Drum Station. Speaking of, today we are going to talk about Bass Station 2. Its ancestor, the original Bass Station from the 90s, already had a reputation of not exactly living up to the promise of its name. So this 2013 analog mono synth was destined to come with a healthy dose of online controversy. At the first glance, Bass Station 2 is ticking all the boxes. A classic 90s style mono with a few tricks up its sleeve, a solid keybed with aftertouch, surprisingly robust plastic enclosure and, thanks for making every synth noob's dreams come true, a big fat cut off now. The two DCOs offer an unpretentious selection of waveforms, PWM, and SYNC. The slightly more basic sub-oscillator leaves little to be desired. And there's a dedicated knob that lets you inject external signals, add noise, and introduce ring modulation. The filter of the original bass station had a very distinct sound, for better or worse, so the added features on its successor are more than welcome. And the acid mode is ready to party! I enjoyed using filter overdrive quite a bit. Two envelopes with a range of triggering modes and two versatile and syncable LFOs share one set of physical controls each, which is far from ideal. In case all this isn't dirty enough for you, there's post-filter distortion and an option for letting oscillator 2 modulate filter cutoff which allows for filter FM. Gnarly, the arpeggiator provides sought after autopilot functionality and everybody likes an SH-101 style step sequencer. This semi-exciting yet well-rounded set of features is definitely enough to shift a few units, but Novation really knocked the ball out of the park with a relentless stream of firmware updates. Much requested sound design staples like filter tracking, a two-voice paraphonic mode, envelope retrigger, a random detune parameter, and micro-tuning were only the beginning. Drum-friendly envelope features tunable sub-oscillator and glide diverge are really nice, but behold, mere mortals bow your head, fall on your knees in admiration and pure awe, AFX mode brought down to earth by the one and only Richard D. James aka Aphex Twin. Well, it basically lets you assign a patch to a key and is great for sound permutations and drums. 
Configuring the synth using the Components Browser interface works like a charm. Many features are only accessible using function key press finishing moves. You can power it via USB or a wall wart. There's MIDI for grown-ups and after almost 10 years, the synth is still available new for little over 400 beer tokens here in EU. Base Station 2 seems to be a thoughtful update of an iconic yet controversial 90s classic. Was Novation able to iron out the flaws of the original? You have already heard the synth in today's intro tune. You can leave your boss metal zone at home. I really appreciate that Novation included a humongous cutoff knob. I think we're supposed to use it. I wouldn't want to have that Tabra in every track, but the multiple distortion stages add a unique character. The band pass and acid filter options have a nice edge to them and the arpeggiator is easy to use. Given the numerous features added, it's quite challenging to do them justice in this episode's music. I'll try my best in a jam Novation should definitely give me money for. should have called it Lead Station. The creamy sound and expressive aftertouch are great for soloing, but it's not always easy to fit these tones in a mix. Again, the acid filter takes the cake, especially in combination with the effective sequencer. I found paraphonic mode with its unpredictable re-triggers to be somewhat hard to operate. Let's explore the instrument's less musically challenging side in this inoffensive mainstream psychedelia for workmates, family gatherings and very vanilla significant and <laughs> It is fascinating that a synthesizer so versatile can feel so limiting at the same time. Base Station the Second is the perfect synth for all things brash, squelchy and heavily distorted and although it offers plenty of amenities for creating both unconventional sounds and more classic synth tones, it's not always easy to get it out of the aforementioned comfort zone. Base Station 2 has already become a classic and I think Novation deserves more respect for releasing affordable analog synths made in China that will eventually end up flooding the local classifieds years before Uli did. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.